Hello everyone. Uh, today we are going to speak about metformin for the treatment of type 2 diabetes and the risk of lactic acidosis. I am Dr. Khalid Hassan, Associate Professor of Clinical Pharmacology and Drug Therapy and Clinical Research. Okay, metformin uh, is a drug used for the treatment of uh, type 2 diabetes and to lower blood glucose. Metformin work on the liver and uh, gastrointestinal system, affecting the liver and gastrointestinal system. Metformin has a warning and precaution for patients suffer from liver disease and kidney disease. Metformin belong to a group of medication called biguanide. Metformin consider like a sens insulin sensitizer uh, increase uh, glucose uptake by target tissue, increase the glucose used by target tissue, and uh, decreasing insulin resistance. Metformin does not promote insulin secretion. Therefore, metformin has less risk of hypoglycemia comparing with the sulfonylurea. For the off-label use of metformin, uh, some uh, physician may use metformin for prophylax, uh, polycystic ovary syndrome. Metformin does not promote insulin secretion. Therefore, metformin has less risk of hypoglycemia comparing with sulfonylurea. Also, conform, uh, metformin has uh, the indication to uh, treat for treatment of polycystic ovary syndrome, but this indication is off-label. Here, we, in this uh, slide, we are talking about the mechanism of action, how the metformin works. Metformin decreases hepatic glucose production, decreases intestinal absorption of sugar, increases uh, insulin uh, sensitivity, uh, on, the, on the weight, the, the, the research found there is a positive or neutral effect on the weight. So some, some article uh, support that metformin decrease weight. Other article, they said the effect on the weight is neutral. No increase, no decrease, it's like in between. So we don't have like a positive effect or negative effect in other article. According to the American Diabetes Association, metformin considered like the drug of choice, initial drug of choice for newly diagnosed patient. Metformin also available uh, alone in the treatment as a single monotherapy or could be used as a combination treatment with other medication. This slide demonstrates the mechanism of action, the main mechanism of action of metformin. As you can see here on the slide, metformin mainly affects the liver by stimulating enzyme called AMPK, stand for adenosine monophosphate protein kinase, adenosine monophosphate protein kinase. Activate this enzyme with, with, will lead to the inhibit, inhibition of a gluconeogenesis, and this will decrease the glucose production from the liver. Also, we have other effects here like increase the glucose uptake from peripheral tissue, increase insulin sensitivity, increase fatty acid oxidation, and decrease glucose, intestinal glucose absorption. What are takeaway uh, point of metformin? Takeaway point of metformin include number one, insulin, uh, metformin increase sensitivity. Uh, of insulin in the peripheral muscles and tissues, number one. Number two, first-line therapy in newly diagnosed patients with type 2 diabetes, uh, low hypoglycemic risk compared with other um, agents, positive or neutral effect on weight, uh, tolerance side effect profile, low cost, decrease A1C level by 1.5 to 2% in new di patients with diabetes. The good things here, they, the, the metformin has a positive effect on the lipid profile. They found metformin decrease triglyceride dec and decrease LDL 5 to 15%. Uh, on the, maybe the positive things also for metformin, they found metformin increase HDL by 2%. Thank <laughs> you.
Regarding the unwanted adverse effect uh, of metformin, as you can see here, the metformin effect related to the dose dependent. That means lower, lower dose or low dose may cause less side effect when you increase the dose for your patient, the patient may suffer from side effect. On the other hand, we can say if the patient suffers from side effect due to the high doses, we can decrease the dose to uh, alleviate the uh, adverse drug reaction. The common adverse drug reaction related to the metformin include diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, stomach upset. Uh, important one here, they found metformin decrease absorption, decrease absorption of B12 from the GI system and in the long-term use of metformin the result will be lower b12 concentration in the blood lower vitamin b12 in the blood with the long-term use therefore we recommend patient to take b12 vitamin b12 during that long-term treatment with the metformin we have some uh, we have rare side effect uh, lactic acidosis and we have seen that in patients with in severely ill patient or, or patient with the acute kidney injury. Therefore, uh, they found that according to the risk of lactic acidosis, uh, metformin considered like contraindicated in patient with a renal dysfunction or renal impairment or renal failure due to the risk of lactic acidosis. The metformin increased risk of lactic acidosis in patient if the patient suffers from renal impairment, if the patient suffers from hepatic impairment, or we can speak about uh, elderly people above or the equal 65 years or old, uh, there's a risk of lactic acidosis, or when you use a met, uh, metformin with a topiramate. Uh, topiramate is a medication used for epilepsy and another use for topiramate for migraine. So when you use metformin with a topiramate, the result will be increased risk of lactic acidosis. In this case, I will summarize that three cases we don't recommend to use metformin, renal impairment, hepatic impairment, uh, elderly people, and co concomitant use with a to topiramate. Also, according to the drug drug interaction here, a radiological study with contrasts here. If the patient needs some uh, radio radio study or like a CT scan with a with a contrast, this may be considered like contraindication because the increased risk of lactic acidosis acidosis and surgery need to stop metformin to avoid lactic acidosis and the cases of hypoxic. A state, state, a state uh, status like, such as acute heart failure and alcohol. Alcohol increases risk of lactic acidosis. Metformin may associate with lactic acidosis. So combine metformin with alcohol. This will increase risk of lactic acidosis. Therefore, we don't recommend patient to drink alcohol during treatment with a metformin. This slide uh, here uh, shows uh, ta the target organ for the metformin. As you can see here, the kidney involved in, in elimination, elimination of metformin. The liver uh, represents the target site or the site of action of metformin. And then we have the blood vessels when we have the blood concentration of metformin. So uh, in, in, in healthy situation, when you have healthy subject only with diabetes, the therapeutic doses of metformin range between 500 to the 2000 milligram in the blood. Uh, the metformin works by uh, block uh, hepatic uh, gluconeogenesis, and this will lead to the decreased uh, production of glucose. And the result will be uh, decreased uh, glucose blood levels. Okay, so in, in the in healthy individual subject here, we have uh, no risk of increasing lactic acidosis uh, because the metformin, any increase in the metformin will be excreted through the kidney no, with the normal kidney function. Now here we assume that we prescribe metformin to the patient with normal kidney function. We accept some number for kidney function, but it should not exceed that number. So the metformin excreted in urine unchanged. If the patient suffers from renal failure, this situation will be become like uh, accumulate, uh, lead to accumulation of metformin in the blood. So 
So next slide. Here, this slide show us the, the patient suffer from renal failure. In this situation, uh, the kidney unable to eliminate metformin in the urine. That lead to the decrease metformin excreted in the urine. Uh, this will uh, result in uh, increased metformin level in the blood. So the result, first result, increased metformin level in the blood. Uh, increased metformin level in the blood will lead to the uh, metformin block hepatic gluconeogenesis. Also, metformin with a high dose will lead to the inhibit uh, metabolism of lactate. And this will lead to accumulate of lactate in the blood and cause lactic acidosis. So here in this slide, you show the patients suffer from renal failure and there's a risk of lactic acidosis. If you go back to the previous slide, the patient here with normal kidney function, there is no risk of uh, lactic acidosis. Okay, regarding metformin dosing recommendation, metformin, metformin, metformin uh, immediate release, metformin immediate release, we have starting dose 500 milligram once or twice daily, or we start with a 850 milligram once daily. Usual recommended dose for the patient, 1,000 milligram twice daily. This is for the immediate release. They said we don't recommend to initiate this uh, treatment if the GFR between 30-45, but if the GFR less than 30, we don't recommend to use metformin. So if the patients are from uh, renal failure, it's not recommend to use metformin due to the increased risk of lactic acidosis, which consider like a life-threatening case. Okay, regarding metformin, extended release, long-acting metformin, XR stands for extended release, starting dose 500, 1000, once daily. We don't have two eyes for extended release, once daily. Number two. Starting recommend uh, maybe usual, usual maximum dose 2000 milligram daily. The same apply for the renal. If the patients are from uh, GFR less than 30, we don't recommend to use metformin. This slide uh, show the metformin uh, combination products available in the pharmacy. We have clipizide plus metformin, cliboride plus metformin. Bioglitazone plus metformin, saxagliptin plus metformin, uh, cytagliptin plus metformin, lenagliptin plus metformin, alogliptin plus metformin, dabagliflozin plus metformin, canagliflozin plus metformin, enfocana, enfocanamet, uh, embagliflozin plus metformin, synergardi uh, and synergardi XR. Then we have ertragliflozin plus metformin. Thank you so much for your listening and have a great day everyone.